Our guest on the uh, program is Dr. Chuck Bishop, new superintendent of schools in Jefferson County. Dr. Bishop, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, how tall are you, Dr. Bishop? 6'1". Six 6'1"? One. Six one? Well, you, Jason, you're 6'2"? Yeah. Bodwell, 6'7"? All right, that's our front court, baby. I'll have to play point guard, Doc. I'm 5'8". I'm not going to be getting too many rebounds. As long as we're not traded for a player to be named later, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> I might be on that list. Oh, okay. Uh, Dr. Bishop, tell us your story. Uh, is, uh, how you got to uh, Jefferson County Schools and the path that took you that way. Well, um, I'm a career educator, 32 years in the public education uh, field, and have held um, every position from teacher to um, athletic director, assistant principal, principal, assistant superintendent. So I followed the typical path throughout my career. I have been a superintendent for over 17 years uh, in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, Jefferson County intrigued me uh, as an opportunity uh, to uh, move to a larger division, uh, one that uh, I believe has uh, um, a great potential and I look forward to, uh, to starting work. I've, I've started a soft transition already, uh, meeting some of the central office staff and uh, um, some of the principals and, and uh, school-based staff. So looking forward to getting started here in a couple of weeks. I lived in Virginia for a couple of years back in the 80s, and it was uh, especially in the northern Virginia area, an area of incredible growth, and, and still is at the time, I think, uh, Fairfax County was 750,000 people. It's over a million now. Uh, you go from uh, a, a state that's growing, uh, but to a state in West Virginia, which is not. However, the Eastern Panhandle is, and Jefferson County uh, is as well. Do you take some lessons from what you saw in Virginia and, and be able to apply those to a West Virginia school district that's also growing? Uh, you know, I think so. The, the main thing that we have to try to do uh, over in Jefferson County is to, to try to stay ahead of it the best we can. It's difficult to plan. I mean, it doesn't take much to drive up the 340 corridor uh, through Charlestown um, and the surrounding area to, to notice the, the housing starts and, and the new homes that are being built, uh, single-family dwelling, townhomes, um, the traffic that's going across the mountain every day, much like we have uh, over here in Clark, uh, to know that there, there is growth. And the, the challenge is to try to stay to, ha to try to do our best to stay ahead of it, and uh, um, with with school space, with uh, staffing needs, um, you know, we'll we'll have students from uh, all walks of life who will who will join us as new residents of the community, and uh, you know, the, the key is to, to try to stay ahead of it. And uh, yeah, I, I think there are some things that we can learn, or I can bring with me to Jefferson County that have been learned over here in Virginia. What do you see as the greatest needs in the school system for Jefferson County at the moment? You know, a lot of times in education and, and those in our community focus on, on test scores. Um, it, you know, it's, it's one test on a given day. Um, so I'd like to look at it from a more well-rounded well perspective. Uh, what kind of opportunities are we providing our students? Are those opportunities leading to um, employment later on. I said last night uh, at my last board meeting in Clark uh, that, you know, our, our job is to provide kids the opportunities that they need to do whatever they choose. Uh, it's not up to us to determine their path, but to provide a pathway uh, that leads them to what's next. So I really want to get in, uh, meet with staff, talk about some of the challenges, talk about what we're doing well, um, what needs to be changed, uh, before I make any bold statements at this point. What specifically was attractive to you about the Jefferson County job? Well, it, it's a great area. I mean, my wife and I, our family, we spend a fair amount of time over in the Shepherdstown, Harbors Ferry area, into Charlestown some. Um, my girls have grown up in, in this area for uh, their entire lives, so they can still maintain friendships that they've created here in, in this community. Uh, so, you know, we're really looking forward to being part of the Jefferson County uh, community as well. Senator Barrett. Oh, thanks, Rob. Uh, Dr. Bishop, uh, good to speak with you this morning. And it's my understanding, uh, as you've mentioned, that you're former superintendent uh, in Clark County, Virginia. Um, and, and as I view Clark County and Berryville, it doesn't, you know, there's a lot of farm, a lot of pretty farmland, uh, housing developments. It's not 
uh, too unlike Jefferson County in my view. But but what do you see as, as some of the differences uh, from going from Clark County uh, into Jefferson County? Well, I think the biggest difference is the size uh, and the number of residents, uh, 57, 58,000 approximately over in Jefferson County. Here in Clark, we're about 14,000 people. Uh, you know, there are um, there will be uh, more schools to manage. There are more students to uh, to provide for, uh, more staff to work with. Uh, so those are the biggest challenges. However, you know, I was in Augusta County um, from let's see, 2010 through 2014 uh, here in Virginia, which at the time uh, was uh, actually larger than than Jefferson. So it was 21 schools and approximately 11,000 students. So. I've been down this path before, but it, it's just the the sheer size of the division. Uh, of course, initially you have to work uh, on getting to know the community, getting to know the people in the community, uh, getting to know uh, folks in our schools. Uh, so, you know, that first year is a whirlwind, especially uh, as you get your feet on the ground. As we as we move forward uh, into the next school year, th there seems every school year that goes by, there seems to be more cultural issues, cultural concerns, uh, things that that I believe don't necessarily belong in schools. Um, and we certainly see that in Northern Virginia a lot, not necessarily in Clark County. Um, and, and there are a lot of varying opinions in Jefferson County uh, from a political perspective on on some of the things being taught in school. Um, some of the uh, just the, the cultural issues and, and way folks um, you know think certain things belong in school. What what is your take on, on some of that, and, and how do you uh, maintain focus on on what's important in a school, which is educating children? Yeah, our job is to teach the curriculum, uh, the curriculum that's been provided or expected from the state level. Um, you know, there's really no place for uh, discussion of a political viewpoints necessarily in uh, our schools uh, staff. Um, uh, should teach curriculum and, and not um, share the other political views. Um, that's the great thing about public schools. It's a great thing about the country that we live in. People do have the right to uh, have their own opinion about what should be uh, uh, about what should be taught, what should not be taught. But my goal is to stick with what we're supposed to be teaching. Teach the curriculum expected uh, in our schools in West Virginia. And uh, and leave all the rest uh, for somebody else to discuss. To be perfectly honest, Mr. Bodwell, Doctor, let me talk about the biggest the biggest issue that we have in schools. I believe here in West Virginia, um, which is especially in the Eastern Panhandle, we're sort of a farm system uh, for teachers for other areas because they get paid a lot more in other areas. We're sort of like the the pirates are you know, for Rob the. Pirates, they bring people up, they oh. train them, they become great, and then they go elsewhere <laughs> well, and they don't, flourish. Don't make me sad. We got shut out by the Cubs again last night. <laughs> um, but we have, I mean, we don't have locality pay. We have the fact that, you know, we're a very we're a very poor state in the middle, and we're not a very poor state up here. The cost of living up here is, is very, very high very compared high. to the rest of the state, but the teacher pay isn't that much more. So we have teachers, they come up, they, we have a teacher shortage. Are there any things that you are going to bring in that you believe can help to stem the tide of teachers leaving and help us to have you know, less, of a, less of an exodus and less of a teacher shortage? Well, that teacher shortage exists everywhere. Uh, we've had the same challenges uh, here in Clark uh, that, uh, have, uh, uh, that you've had in Jefferson and, and through a, this issue is throughout the country. Fewer people are choosing uh, education as a profession. Uh, Jefferson County, uh, you know, we have a, uh, a recruiting and retention plan in place right now. To be honest, I'm not uh, totally 100% um, familiar with that uh, plan at this point, but I know that it's being addressed. Um, you know, pay is what it is, but there are some things that we can do, I think, to create a culture where people want to be. Um, a collaborative environment where people are supported and listened to, where they're part of the decision-making process. At the end of the day, that doesn't pay bills, but um, people have never gotten into public education for the money. Do you, uh, so, go ahead, sorry. Um, do you think there can be, and this just popped into my head, do you think there can be recruiting methods centered around what the senator was talking before, 
um, about there are there's a lot of politis there are a lot of politics, politicization in schools. Okay, and yeah. in Northern Virginia and other areas, that is an issue. Is there a way to sort of publicize the fact that that we don't really have that as much in this area? to maybe attract some teachers that don't want to deal with stuff like that, that just want to teach the kids and not, you know, give them, you know, their ideology? Well, one of the things that I, I believe there is, and that's part of the, what, uh, what I'm speaking about with uh, creating a culture where teachers are given the opportunity to just teach, teach the curriculum, uh, work with students, care for them, uh, in the way that we, we as parents expect them to be cared for. Um, you know, that's what Clark County has tried to create. And, and we have had uh, some success last night at our school board meeting. We actually, in our personnel agenda, approved some folks who are coming from places across the mountain from us, uh, our close neighbors, uh, who want out of uh, that kind of environment. So I think Jefferson County, uh, we can also um, benefit from that. Uh, but again, it's creating that culture, putting teachers in a position where they can teach uh, and um, uh, be responsible for students, which is what they want what they want to do in the first place. Sounds like you need to put up a bunch of billboards over the mountain near some schools. <laughs> I've had a few folks ask me if uh, if we have any vacancies uh, uh, over in uh, Jefferson County. So we'll see how that plays out. You will start July 1, as I understand it, as your first day on the job, Dr. Bishop. What do you do between now and then? Well, I continue this soft transition um, of visiting uh, uh, Jefferson County, uh, beginning to do get my feet on the ground. Uh, you know, I'm not going to hit the ground running, but I, I certainly want to be on my feet when I hit the ground. Um, so that's part of this. Uh, fortunately, I've had the opportunity to uh, serve uh, three different communities in the Commonwealth of Virginia as a superintendent. So I've done this before. Uh, this soft transition seems to work. I'll meet with, uh, right out of the gate, meet with department chairs, department leaders uh, in the central office to, uh, to learn more about the division. Uh, and then um, July 1, uh, you know, it, it's game time. Uh, please don't take this as me trying to set you up here or anything because it's not intended that way, but it's obviously no secret that the Jefferson County Board of Education uh, leaked your name out before it was supposed to get uh, out to the public in regards to you accepting this job. Uh, has that created any problems for you at your uh, current stop, and uh, will that affect your relationship with the Jefferson County Board of Education? Well, the answer to both of those questions is no, it hasn't affected anything. Um, I have made it perfectly clear uh, to uh, the school board here in Clark, as well as uh, uh, the Board of Education in Jefferson, that uh, I have a, a foot in both doors. Uh, I want to continue to finish out here uh, the way I should, uh, to, to uh, be involved in the things I should be involved in, to make sure that I leave this place um, the way it deserves to be uh, to, to be left. Uh, at the same time, I do want to be uh, involved in Jefferson and uh, start to get my, uh, again, my feet on the ground. Uh, but no, that has not created any issues. I, you know, I've, I've had this happen before. Um, it happens and, uh, you know, no hard feelings at all. I mean, we'll move forward. And, uh, you know, I was probably the reason that it went slower than, um, than it maybe should have or the Board of Education in Jefferson wanted it to go uh, because I was really concerned about uh, making sure that I had an opportunity to tell the folks here in Clark uh, that I was leaving. Um, my board chair and vice chair uh, here knew uh, that I was in the running for the job and knew when I was offered um, that I had accepted. So you know, I tried to do things the right way and, and uh, by both, both communities. Um, and, you know, things happen. And, and to clarify, it was allegedly one member of the board, not the entire board as a whole that uh, leaked the name. Go ahead, Jonathan. Well, as you're coming over here to we like to refer to as the best Virginia, um, <laughs> this, of course, is West Virginia Day, June 20th, 1863. We, the decision was made for the better part of Virginia to split apart from the rest, so welcome aboard. Um, 
what what do you see? What are some changes that you want to make in Jefferson County? I mean, I know you've analyzed everything. I mean, is there is there anything glaring? Is there anything up front that you bring where you say, hey, you guys are doing this right now. You're doing a wonderful job. But there's this one thing or two things that I think we need to do that we can do better from Jump Street sort of to set the tone. No, I need, I need to know more before we go down that path. But I will say this. I will always make decisions in the best interest of students. So if there is something that is glaringly wrong that, uh, that I feel like doesn't serve students well, then we'll change that pretty quickly. Um, but for me to sit here uh, and say that this is a problem and uh, it's gonna be fixed or needs to be fixed, it is not fair. Senator Barrett. Dr. Bishop, we briefly touched on earlier uh, the issue of locality pay and, and the struggle to keep uh, teachers uh, in both uh, Berkeley and Jefferson counties. Can you just educate me a little bit on the starting pay or, or how uh, salaries compare uh, from uh, Loudoun County uh, to or, or Clark uh, to Clark? Yeah, Loudoun to Clark was my question. Uh, about a twenty thousand dollar difference, uh, step to step. So. Uh, at least, especially as you get later in the in the in your years of experience, uh, we are fairly competitive. Our starting salary next year here in Clark will be fifty one thousand for a, a bachelor's degree teacher. Uh, Loudon's is in the upper fifties, but as you go through the years of experience, that gap widens, and by the end of someone's career, it's thirty thousand dollars approximately. And, and, uh, I'm sorry. Where does that funding come from? To, to make up that difference. So it, just for a starting teacher, for example, if they're, if they're 51 in Clark and 58 or 59 in Loudoun, where does mm -hmm. that additional seven to $8,000 come from? So there are staffing ratios that are, uh, that are funded by the Commonwealth of Virginia and the standards of accreditation, standards of quality. And um, if you exceed those staffing ratios, the locality pays 100%. But the answer to your question is, more often than not, uh, localities actually fund the higher pay. Okay, so that comes directly, and in a lot of cases, comes directly from the tax. county budget or the county tax increase. Yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. and in some instances, it comes from, uh, and I'm not sure, I'm, I'm assuming that education is funded through Virginia State general revenue budget. So right, that's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Speaking of Loudoun County, uh, while you were in Clark County, Dr. Bishop, obviously Loudoun County was a lightning rod for conflicts between the Loudoun County Board of Education and parents. Uh, did you deal with any of a thing, anything similar to that at Clark? Uh, no, we haven't. Um, you know, we have worked hard to be transparent here, uh, worked hard to make sure that parents are heard uh, if they have or when they have concerns, uh, but we have not experienced what some other school divisions have in terms of, um, you know, some of the very heated debates that have happened. The legislature, Jason, you were part of this, passed a very important bill regarding education K through three and uh, making sure that automatic promotion was no longer a part of K through three going forward, that students would need to learn how to read to proficiency in order to advance because studies have told us that if you don't get it by third grade, it's very difficult to get it uh, later on. As you take over as the superintendent of Jefferson County Schools, how much attention will you be paying to what the legislature does? And uh, have you read that act? Are you familiar with it uh, as you begin to take over this job? Familiar with it, yes. Have I read it? No. Um, Virginia has a very similar initiative now with the Virginia, Virginia Literacy Act. Uh, based on the science of reading. Uh, and, you know, foundational skills for students are incredibly important, uh, reading, uh, math. Uh, and, um, you know, we want to make sure that all of our students in Jefferson have a solid foundation moving forward. So, yeah, the expectation should be that students are reading at proficiency level. Um, you know, we'll make accommodations for students who have special needs. Uh, but uh, high expectations is not a bad thing. Final questions for Dr. Bishop. Well, there's been, I mean, through COVID and everything, with all the, the interruption of education, we're now a couple of years out from that. I know that is something that is still, I mean, kids who are fifth and sixth grade who lost a lot of the basics 
are you in favor of doing a lot more remedial stuff maybe to help bring those kids back up with the the, the basics yeah i mean i, I think it's our our responsibility uh, regardless of where you're serving as a as a public school employee to meet the needs of our students so that that means there's additional remedial services or interventions that are needed uh, i'm all for that again you know we, we need to try to give our students what they need um, one of the things that I found during my career, though, is that those services often uh, you know, uh, need to happen, if possible, during the school day uh, because kids are pulled in a million different directions at the end of the, uh, the, end of the day, from athletics to employment, uh, family responsibilities. So if you can um, do remedial uh, education or intervene during the day and provide additional services to students, uh, that often is, is way more effective uh, because kids don't have to choose <laughs> between uh, going to, to work or staying to work on, uh, you know, uh, on math uh, after school. Dr. Bishop, final word is yours. I appreciate your time. Anything you'd like to make sure our audience knows about you taking over Jefferson County Schools? I'm excited. Uh, you know, this is a new opportunity for not only me, but for, for Jefferson County. Uh, can't wait to meet uh, the fine folks in West Virginia, uh, our staff, uh, and get uh, roll my sleeves up and get to work. It's uh, it's going to be uh, a, gr a great experience. I hope for uh, for the community. Uh, I can guarantee you that they're going to get 100% of me every day, and um, I just look forward to it. Thank you, Dr. Bishop. I appreciate your time this morning. Best of luck to you with the Thank new position. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Dr. Chuck Bishop.